Hello, juniors in high school, class of 2025. And if you're watching this video many years from now, you won't be the class of 2025 anymore. You'll be the, some, oh God, that made no sense. I'm not even going to start the video over. I'm just going to continue because this is all about not trying to be perfect, but just keeping it real. As you can see from my sunglasses, I'm keeping it real. So as promised, you guys are the guinea pigs for the SAT digital. And um, on the blue book, there is this practice tool called Preview, which has some questions. The first eight are verbal. And as promised in my last email to you all, I said that I would give you the answer key. Well, I'm going to cruise through these eight questions. And I definitely recommend, if you haven't done it already, for you to stop this video and do these eight on your own via the Blue Book application. It's something you can find on the College Board. I'll provide the link in this email. All right. So I'm going to cruise, right? So this is assuming that you guys already did it. So I'm not going to take my time. I'm going to cruise, right? So this first one is a sentence completion question. And because it says we're talking about musical, pleasant musical quality, we definitely need the answer to be B, melodic. And actually, why don't I just click it? Boom. And there we go. The next one is from a text by Herman Melville, the guy that wrote Moby Dick. And his singularity impelled a closer scrutiny, and then it goes into how he looks, right? So this underlined portion sets up the character description presented in the sentences that follow. The correct answer was D as in dog, D as in doornail, D as in doorknob. The next question gives us this very convoluted scientific study by Megan O'Brien and Ala Ahmed. And it asks us, what was the main purpose of the text? And if we read this closely, and if we look at this first sentence, it says that some studies have suggested that posture can influence cognition, but we should not overstate this phenomenon. So right off the bat, the author is saying, be careful with overstating the relationship between posture, how you sit or stand, and how you think, cognition. And the answer is, it does, where's the answer? Boo, 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 boo. Da, 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 da. Right, D. It discusses this study to illustrate why caution is needed when making claims about the effects of posture on cognition. The answer is D again. The next one, two different studies or two different texts, and it asks us how would Carceres and colleagues, which is text two, how would the people of text two describe the view of the theorists presented in text one? And if we read them and learned the relationship, basically what it is saying, as text two is saying, it may seem plausible, but it's not supported by the research team's finding. The answer is C. Next, Ghosts of the Old Year, a little poem a little description of a poem, and they want us to find the piece of text that represents an ongoing cycle of anticipation, which means like, oh my God, I can't wait, followed by regretful reflection, which means, oh man, I could have been better. Which text does that? The answer is D. And since I like poetry, and I am maybe you do too, and because I have cool sunglasses on, I'm going to just read it. And so the years go swiftly by. Each coming brings ambitions high. Oh my God, I'm going to do so well. I'm going to meet my goals. And each departing year leaves a sigh linked to the past. Oh, I sucked, right? That's the answer. The next one asks us which choice effectively uses the data from the table to complete the example. The example says they want participants evaluation varied widely depending on which occupation was being considered. So we need to find the example that shows that the evaluations varied widely, a lot of variation, depending on which occupation with different occupations. And the correct answer should be C, because it says 82% participants believe it's good that a robot works as a tour guide, whereas 16% feel it's good that a robot will work as a surgeon. I'd rather have a robot as a tour guide than as a surgeon any day. What do you guys think? So the answer should have been C. Number seven, nice short little thing. It's just about grammar, and the correct answer is D. Don't fall for choice A, because we would never say, the reason, comma, is that I like you. 
we'd say the reason is that I like you, right? Same thing here. The reason seeds from a dying dandelion appear to float in the air while falling is, we don't want to say falling comma, right? So the answer was D. I hope that was clear. And finally, number eight, bullet points of research. And the question asks us, which choice most effectively uses irrelevant information from the notes to accomplish this goal? And what's the goal? The goal is the student wants to emphasize a similarity between the two works. So which answer choice shows a similarity? It's C, because it says both this work and this work include discarded objects. This work uses audio cassette tapes. This work uses plastic forks, but it shows the similarity between the two works. So the answer is C. And um, that brings us to the end of those eight. So um, if you have any questions or if you have any comments or thoughts, email me back. Um, but I give this to you as a little warm up and stay tuned in following weeks as you guys move through your junior year uh, for some more digital prep help from me. Yours truly, Drew. Take care and have a great day.